I'm Pam Seidel on King, just west of Jarvis. You know, even if you don't take public transit, it's worth it to come down here and see the virtually carless King. So how well is the pilot project working? Well, we hopped on the King car from the beginning of the project, which is Bathurst, right till the end, which is Jarvis. And we timed it to see how much time was actually saved. And I can tell you, the riders we talked to are thrilled. Cherry to Dufferin Gate via King. The ride provided us no shortage of fans of the new system. I take this all the time. Yes. Normally it takes me about 40 minutes to get from King and Dufferin to St. To, to St. Andrew Station. Really? 15 minutes today. No like this kidding. is incredible. I know it's going to be an adjustment for drivers, but just like just like St. Clair West was an adjustment for drivers when yes. they did that. Yeah. So I think this is amazing, and the TTC and the city needs to figure out a way to make this work everywhere. Yeah. So you're in favor of it. Oh, big time. Thanks. I have taken the the streetcar from the uh, Bell Center down to Young, and it took forever. So today, just that same time frame, it's probably improved by about. 100%. We really did zip along, and while we accidentally went one stop past Jarvis, have we actually passed Jarvis? We figured out it took just over 15 minutes for the whole route. It is quite a sight from the front of the streetcar to be able to look all the way down King with hardly a car to be seen. But there is no doubt there is still some confusion about how the new rules work. Drivers are allowed to turn on to King, but only for a block. They have to turn right at the next intersection to get right off it again. We spotted plenty of cars going straight through the intersection in spite of signs clearly prohibiting it. Also, traffic on Jarvis was nightmarish even in the middle of the day, thanks to drivers being forced off King. And they are not happy about it. It sucks. <laughs> Does it? Oh, so your life is a lot more difficult now. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds good. But it don't work out for everybody, I guess. Drivers will have to find uh, some somewhere else to go, right? Yeah. Obviously, we're fixing one thing and fix and, and, and breaking something else. Right. The other concern is for businesses and restaurants along King. This is a bizarre sight, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I've never seen so few cars on King, like I said. <laughs> the manager of the restaurant district says it's too soon to tell just how much of an impact the pilot project will have on business. But it is a worry, especially looking towards next year's busy summer season. Um, again, just the visibility of our restaurant and the amount of people that are going by it affects us for sure. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we get a lot of walking traffic, but I know we'll get less driving traffic. Brad Ross of the TTC says, of course, this is not a perfect plan. They also knew that there would be glitches. They expected to do some fine tuning over the course of the next few weeks. They're keeping a very close eye on how this is going. They also say they are determined to make it work. They've got four extra streetcars on standby at any given time in case one breaks down or is put out of commission uh, for any reason. We have also heard that only streetcars with top maintenance records are being used along this stretch. So coming up, we also hopped on the Queen car today and, uh, to, and timed that as well just to comp compare the commute time. So stay tuned for the results of that. That's coming up a little later. Well, we've been conducting an experiment today to see just how well the King Street pilot project is doing. It's only three days in, and today is really the first normal business day. And so far, a carless King is getting rave reviews from streetcar riders. So it took us about 16 minutes along the full stretch of the pilot project from Bathurst along King uh, to Jarvis. So for comparison's sake, we decided to hop on the Queen car as well and rode that same stretch and timed it. The results might surprise you. Here we go. It sure felt a lot slower after the King car, which really moved. There was all kinds of traffic and construction on Queen, and we figured that overflow traffic from people who would normally take King would have a big impact on congestion. But regular riders of the Queen car said it was a pretty typical ride. The expectation is that there will be more traffic on Queen because there are no cars on King, right? Yeah. So, I, I don't know, I don't really notice any big difference right now, but I mean, um, today's the first day. Yeah. It might be, might change. Did you notice anything? No, it was, it was fine this morning. Yes. Yeah. Do you sort of anticipate that it might slow you down with the King project going on? There might, though, right? There might be difficulty for the, the drivers, mostly. Yes. Not for us. And while it took 16 minutes to get to Young, as long as it did for the whole ride on King, after that, we moved along well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. All right, here we are 
at Jarvis. 840. 1840. 18, yeah, close to 19 minutes. Not that much more. Now, according to the TTC, 65,000 people ride the King car every day compared to just 45,000 on the Queen car. So that partly explains why there weren't bigger differences in the times. So FYI, the police continue to issue warnings here on King when people break the rules. But starting next week, they will be issuing tickets.